Hello, 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 and welcome once again to Movies That Pop. I'm the Colonel. Let's see what popped up in theaters this week. <laughs> January strikes again. Whew, it's almost over, people, and we're getting through it together. So, with that being said, let's have a chat about the new talking reincarnated dog movie, shall we? Now, I saw the trailer for A Dog's Purpose a long time ago and thought to myself, Oh man, this thing is gonna wring the tears out of me, isn't it? And I'm gonna hate this movie for it, aren't I? And then PETA came along last week trying to give me another reason to hate this movie before it was released, when it called for a boycott due to some suspiciously timed leaked footage of a dog performing a stunt for the movie. Look, 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 look. However you feel about the animal action in this film, there was no need to call for a boycott, PETA. Not when I, the Colonel, can give everyone several much better and more objective reasons to stay away from this movie based on its content alone. That's right. A Dog's Purpose is a cloying, unfocused, manipulative, and tone-deaf collection of scenes that adds up to the equivalent of a Hallmark commercial. That trailer, which kinda sorta gives you a Cliff Notes version of the entire story from beginning to end, gives you the best moments and is only slightly longer than a Hallmark commercial anyway. The movie as a whole fills in 90 more minutes of material that is mostly uncomfortable to watch and adds up to not much at all. So here's the premise. You have this dog, see, and he keeps dying and getting reincarnated. Seriously, he gets euthanized in the first minute as a puppy. The dog's voiceover narration by Josh Gad begins as a nice and comforting presence and it's kind of cute until you realize midway through the movie that this dog has no real insight and cute is all you're gonna get. He just narrates the action as it occurs. Oh, this person feels bad. Oh, I wish there was a way for me to make him feel better. I'll lick his face. Maybe that'll work. Oh, I smell that these two people are in love with each other. Maybe I can try to hook them up. And even when he's about to die of old age, all he will say is, Oh, I'm tired. Seriously, this is our protagonist. Soon after this dog goes to the old puppy oven, and no, we don't see the puppy oven, we get the longest segment of the film where we show this dog becoming the pet and best friend of a boy named Ethan. And then we follow Ethan's life through the eyes of the dog, and I can't stress to you how outlandish some of the events of his life become, and how heavy-handed. You see, Ethan has a traveling salesman absentee alcoholic father, and enormous talent on the football field that leads to a college scholarship which he loses when a jealous friend accidentally burns his house down. <laughs> I can't even say it with a straight face. Okay, if you're still with me, you're probably laughing. I know I was laughing while I was watching the movie. This stuff is handled with all the subtlety of a freight train. What is subtle and lovely is the romantic relationship between Ethan and Hannah, played by the always appealing Britt Robertson from Tomorrowland. And I have to say, this newcomer, KJ Appa, has real charm and charisma, and he's got a bright future ahead. In fact, right now, he's due to appear in the upcoming series Riverdale as legendary comic book character Archie, so it looks like this guy is gonna be huge in a few years. Anyway, after tragedy befalls Ethan, he changes in a way that doesn't feel organic to the story and seems sort of invented by the writers, and then and that story just kind of falls apart. That phase of the dog's life is just over. We enter a weird middle stretch of the movie then, when the dog dies of old age in a prolonged way, then gets reincarnated again as a police dog, then gets shot, then befriends an African-American couple, and these little vignettes after the first section was so detailed feel really shallow and short. All we know is that these people are sad, and then the dog keeps them company and licks their face a lot. All along the way, he gets shot, gets actual shots, falls in love with a dog that really seems like he could care less about him, and gets neglected by a couple of junkies. Look, look, this movie looks like it's being marketed as a family film, but honestly, with some of the themes present, including alcoholism, animal abuse, and... Oh man, I didn't even mention the cartoonish police plot with a guy who kidnaps his own daughter at gunpoint. This movie isn't really suitable for children, and it won't be tolerable for adults either. So who is this movie for? Quick side note before we go any further, this movie was directed by Swedish filmmaker Lasse Hallström, who has been nominated for an Academy Award and whose previous films have demonstrated a steady hand and an ability to navigate with subtlety and depth complex human relationships. So I don't know what the heck happened here. Look, if you've seen the trailer, then you know that Ethan comes back into play at the end of the movie, played by Dennis Quaid as a bitter old man, and by then, this movie, which again is completely tone deaf about handling these things, rumbles to its conclusion with a last minute scene where the dog actually communicates to Ethan that yes, he is the reincarnation of his childhood dog, Bailey. Which is completely unnecessary and I believe less poignant than merely implying the connection. One more example of the movie not really having its finger on the pulse of its audience. All in all, I award a dog's purpose an empty bag of popcorn. The only story that has any substance is uneven and heavy handed. The rest of the stories are unnecessary and the narration by the reincarnated dog I still can't believe I'm saying that. Fails to live up to the title. We don't get a summation of what it all means that makes any sense. We don't really learn what a dog's purpose is. Therefore, this movie has no purpose. Moving on, end of story. Cut. 
That does it for this edition of Movies That Pop. Don't forget to follow me, the Colonel, on Twitter, at Movies That Pop. And click the icon right down there to visit our channel if you'd like to see more, and support us by clicking subscribe while you're there, and by clicking the thumbs up icon below. If by some chance you love this movie, feel free to call me a heartless cat lover who doesn't understand in the comments as well. In the meantime, thanks for watching. I'm the Colonel. Good dog. Bad movie. Good dog.